it's because the physician shortage is why. The idea that we need more doctors as a consequence of having few people willing to do it as a profession is why. And I can talk more about this in another video, but put simply, we understand that being a doctor is considered a stable, lucrative, and clout-filled job, and there are many people who want to do it. And as a result of that, it's competitive because the number of people who want to do it exceed the number of spots available to train them. That is why the most cliche answer of answering that you like science and you want to help people is not enough. Not because that isn't enough of a motivating factor to do the job, but because it isn't an exceptional reason to be a doctor. And in something as competitive as medicine, everybody has to be exceptional to be given the opportunity to study it. If it was a less competitive position, just saying that you want the job because it pays well and you're capable of doing it would be reason enough like we see in many other jobs, which can be seen as generally undesirable. I know I give medicine a hard time because it's what I've given my life to, but I recognize that every job, basically, that we consider to have good job prospects has this problem of exceptionalism. It's just really hard to see so many people lose so much of their lives pursuing dreams that are ultimately crushed. But I guess that's just the reality of living in a world with over seven and a half billion people on it and only a finite amount of demand for services. I'm not saying studying medicine is bad here, just that it sucks that a capable person who has no other reason other than passion for the field and their desire and will to help people will be turned away in the current system of things because that's seen as too much of a cliche. At this point, it would probably be good to give tips to people in this predicament of being capable but not exceptional in their reasoning to be a doctor. Hello, if you're asking me, you're asking the wrong person because I am really terrible when it comes to personal typewriting. My advice would probably be to look elsewhere for that, be open to critique, and avoid digging your heels into the ground about how you feel and your positions and whether or not you're right and the other person is wrong when you do get feedback. In an ideal situation, you would have lots of qualified people to review your application, the time to take their feedback, and also the willingness to accept it and make your application better. But I realized that this is probably not the case. Without that, one thing I wish I did and probably would have been helpful to me was watching the YouTube series Application Renovation by Medical School Headquarters. I have no affiliation with them, but I think I saw their videos once or twice when I was going through the application cycle. But I think that their critique and the titles, it hit a little bit too close to home. And that pre-med anxiety that I think a lot of us can relate to uh, just became too much for me that I wasn't really able to use the tool effectively. And so I think that inability to accept that I was still so far away from achieving my goals in the ideal way despite my efforts is probably why I didn't achieve them. So hopefully you're a bit smarter than me in that department. <laughs> so to summarize, the real reason why wanting to help people and liking science is not enough of a reason to want to become a doctor is because of supply and demand. And hopefully you're smart enough to figure out a way to present yourself in a way that makes you stand out.